This is the situation we have to live with, and I have no doubt that the direct consequence of the occupation. Anyone who said occupation corrupts was absolutely right. And we are occupying the West Bank and the Gaza Strip for the last 25 years, and this is corrupting us, maybe even more than the American aid. Well, I would like this to, to be eliminated altogether. I think that we should pay for our arms out of our own money. But in any case, this is one of the most damaging gifts that we get from the United States. What is your view on whether occupation corrupts and American aid corrupts Israel? Well, occupation definitely corrupts because you have to treat uh, the people that you're occupying as subhumans, uh, which is exactly what the Israelis do. Uh, they can't treat them as equals because if they treated them as equals, they would have to give them a vote. And given that there are as many Palestinians as there are Israeli Jews, this would be a huge problem for Israel. So instead, they treat them like subhumans, and the end result is you effectively have an apartheid state. And General Paulette, he understood that from the get-go, and many others understood that uh, as well. Uh, with regard to U.S. aid, uh, as I've said on this show before, and as Steve Walt and I said uh, in our book, uh, this is largely a result of the power of the Israel lobby in the United States. The Israel lobby thinks it's doing uh, good work for Israel. It's helping Israel out. In fact, that's not true at all. And the fact that the United States gives Israel unconditional aid, in other words, no matter what Israel does, we back it to the hilt, is not good for Israel. And I think the lobby bears a lot of responsibility for that situation. A lot of uh, viewers are writing in as to whether General Paulette, who I don't believe is with us any longer, is the father of Miko Paulette, and the answer to that is yes. Yes. Um, one of the things that you commented on, not necessarily uh, critically, but uh, from an observation point of view of what you observed on Friday, was that the uh, Israeli legal team was attempting to shift the focus from what the IDF is doing in Gaza to what happened on October 7th. I'm sure that that didn't surprise you, even though that's largely irrelevant to whether or not uh, genocide is going on in Gaza. Yeah, it was quite interesting the extent to which the Israeli speakers, uh, and all of them, uh, talked about the events of October 7th. And what they were trying to do, obviously, was shift the focus. And furthermore, I don't think that this tricked uh, the judges at all. I think they understood what was going on. I think this was done mainly uh, for uh, propaganda purposes or for influencing public opinion around the world. And the Israelis actually said uh, at one point, one of the Israeli spokesmen said at one point that what happened on October 7th does not absolve us from following the laws of war in the conduct uh, of our campaign in Gaza. So he was, in effect, admitting that what they were saying had nothing to do with what the issue was on the table. 